Hello, welcome back to the series of uh, lectures. Uh, I think we have seen almost around uh, uh, 10 uh, uh, dynamics lectures. This is the 11th one. I think if you recall what precisely we did uh, in this, I described the Newton's laws of motion. Then uh, I explained each of the laws, I think, very detailed. Uh, I explained every minute part of it. Now the next part I did was uh, to define the force and look at the basic forces of the three basic forces that we have in nature, namely nuclear strong force, a gravitational force, and uh, electromagnetic or weak force. Now, in this electromagnetic or weak force, we have seen at least four manifestations. Number one, tension. We described that in great detail. And then we went on to look at pulley constraints, rope constraints, etc. In that. Then we looked at uh, wedge constraints. We were looking at normal force. Uh, virtually most of the cases of the normal force I have uh, worked out for you and discussed, uh, I think, many inclined surfaces. Then we also saw a combined pulley wedge constraint where I discussed one example. Now I'm going to discuss another example for you. And that is what I was trying to figure it out in my last lecture. Now you can see this is what I was trying to describe. All the free surfaces. Right, well, this is what uh, I was trying to figure it out in my last lecture. I think I, I didn't complete it. I left, uh, Maybe I'm now making a fresh beginning for that. Now you can follow it carefully. This is having awesome. Now this is small. And you see, as this comes down, this rope is pulled. So this rope will in turn pull this on this side. So then this body will force this forward. That means while M has, let us say, an acceleration, B and let me tell you, the acceleration of M downwards is A. What is the actual acceleration of small m? That means, first of all, A and B are interrelated. So how do you go about that? Now look at how many segments it has got. One, two, three, four, rope segments. So how do you do that? You look at this, plus A, Right? I'll put it plus A. And here it is moving like this minus B. No change, minus B. So, the whole thing is equal to zero. So, the constraint here is A is equal to 2B. Now, this body has an acceleration B like this, has an acceleration A like that. So what is the total acceleration here? This one. That is nothing but, but you know, uh, A is equal to 2B, so you get uh, B root 5. That is the acceleration. In fact, this, it would be accelerating like this. That is the one. No, that is a very general thing. Now, how do you write your FBD? That is very important in this problem. How do you write, draw your FBD? Let us take this small body. This is the small body you have. Tension, well, and this will push it. Let us call it as N. This is Mg. Now, just see, is there any other force acting on this? No. How is it accelerating? A like this, B like this. 
So, how do you write your equations here? Mg, I think uh, we will write here Mg minus T is equal to Ma and N is equal to small n b. I think uh, this is a straightforward case for the small body. Now the larger body, we have to be very careful, look, tension, tension, tension. First see this, it's being pulled like this, it's being pulled like this, it's being pulled like this. T, T, T. And then this body reaction normal force. N like that. No friction, nothing. And uh, this is accelerating with uh, B. Okay? How do you write this relation now? Horizontally, now this is a T and T. What is the total force? 2T in the forward direction, N in the backward direction. 2T minus n is equal to m into b. And in this case, now you can see there is another equation. Now this is n dash mg t. So what do you get here? n dash is equal to t plus mg. Now you see how many equations, how many variables. If I consider now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 variables, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 variables, 5 equations you can solve and get for A and B on your own. Okay? I'm sure you can do that. Please try to do that. Uh, not very difficult to solve this. You can go and get the answer. Verify it for yourself. I'm sure you won't have any problem doing this. Now you have seen normal force in various instances I have given. Uh, I, where uh, there are several other applications of normal force, but I would discuss only when uh, I come to the specific problem in any of the concepts that I'm going to discuss in the future. Okay? Now, so we have discussed normal force. Now, before I go to friction, let me also look at uh, spring force. See, we look at light spring and heavy spring. Light spring means mass is uh, negligible. Mass is negligible. Here mass is a consideration. Okay? Mostly we look at negligible mass. Alright? Now let us look at one by one. What does the spring force do? For example, uh, this is the spring. This is at its natural length. When I try to pull it like this, say by x, how does it look like? That is how it looks like. What does the spring tend to do? It will try to pull back. My force, applied force here is pulling it slowly. I am elongating the spring. You can elongate, you can compress. This is spring. If I take a string, neither elongation nor compression. 
that is spring. This is spring. Then you have one more, a, a rubber band. What can you do with a rubber band? Can elongate, can't compress. I hope uh, the distinction is clear. You have to be very careful. A spring has dual properties. You can elongate it, you can compress it. String doesn't have either of the properties because basically it is inextensible. If it is extensible, you will have only elongation there, no compression. Same is the case with rubber band. Rubber band I can elongate it, but I can't uh, compress it. It's not possible. See? So be careful. They may ask any of these things at any stage. But when you elongate, elastic forces come into play. When you elongate or when you compress again, elastic forces come into play. Okay? So, more if you don't elongate it too much, within the elastic limits or Hooke's law, within that, the force you apply is proportional to the uh, displacement there. In other words, it could be elongation or compression. That is directly proportional means F is equal to some K, K E or K C. Anything it is possible. X takes care of either E or C. Look at it. There are two things that I am talking about. When you talk of a spring, spring has, and now you look at this, in which state it is? Elongated. If it is an elongated, of course, this is fixed here. It is in the state of elongation. What does the spring force do? It will pull back. It will pull back. You are taking it. So, this is during the during elongation. That means as long as I elongate it, spring force is negative. Why negative? My E is positive. I am pulling it the opposite direction of that. Therefore, I am putting that negative sign there. Okay? During process of elongation, FC is negative. That is number one. Number two. Suppose I release it there. From elongation to natural length. From elongation, state of elongation to natural length. State of elongation to natural length. This is how it is being pulled. Do you understand? Therefore, now Fs is positive. Why? The displacement is in this direction. Force is also in the same direction. So during the process of elongation, what is happening? F is equal to negative. What is this F here? Not the force I am applying there. Spring force. A force develops like tension. Tension develops whenever you try to stretch it. Here I am stretching it, I am successful, therefore elastic forces come into play. And therefore it is a negative, here it is positive. Now, during compression, during compression what is going to happen? Fs is, uh, now I am pushing it. Spring force will put like this. And uh, compression is in the opposite direction. Therefore, 
the spring force is negative. Then, from the force of state of compression to its natural length, the spring force is positive. So, be very careful here. And I am uh, talking within the limits of elastic uh, limits. Therefore, F is always taken as K. K is called here a spring constant or a force constant. This is spring constant or force constant or stiffness constant. What do you mean by this? More K, more stiff is the spring. It is difficult to elongate or compress. That is more K. Very, having a very high strength. That is K is more. And its units, you know, are Newton per meter. Okay? So the more the K value, more strong is the spring. And one very important characteristic feature of the spring is the product of K and natural length is constant for that spring. Very, very important statement. I will show you what you mean by this. This is the natural length. Okay? Let us say this is the spring constant. Suppose I cut this into two pieces. Let its length be x. Let its length be y. Let us say the spring constant is kx there. The spring constant there. You know, these two have become new springs. And one important thing I tell you. You can easily visualize from my own statement. Same thing, the product of k and l is constant. If I am reducing length of the same spring, not by compression, not by elongation, either by cutting it, are stretching it to a permanent stage. Don't get confused between these two. When I am elongating, when I am compressing, length of the spring does indeed change. But I am not talking of that change here. Because that goes into the displacement. Here I am talking of two individual, exclusively different cases. I am cutting the spring into two parts with x is to y. Which one will have more spring constant? This or this? Natural length is less. Therefore, this is more stiff. If this is more than this, this is less stiff. This is least stiff. So, how do you look at that? K is less than KY less than. Is intuitively you can give the answer. For the same spring. You bring in another spring with another spring constant. Don't compare these two. You can never do that. Okay? Right. Now, how to get that? Only one uh, criteria that we have. KL is constant for all the X is equal to Y1. Got it. What is KX? KL by X. What is K by? KL by This is how the spring constant becomes. If I cut the spring, cut into N equal parts, that means, originally KL, 
each part is L by N. Each part is L by N. So this implies KN is equal to L L gets cancelled. If I make it into three equal parts, the spring constant becomes three times. Ten parts, ten times. Each spring. So very, very difficult. I cut it into hundred parts. That one part I take and try to stretch it is extremely difficult to do that. Okay, this is uh, you got it, number of equal parts. Now, if I elongate it to a new length and L, what do you mean by this? Originally, spring is like this. That is, it will not go back. Now, sometimes you are given a spring while playing, suddenly you stretch it, it won't go back. So, you have created a new spring here. But its natural length is more, its natural, original natural length is less. If I take this is K, this is L, and then this is K dash, KL is equal to K dash and L implies K dash. its spring constant becomes very, very small. So likewise you have it. Is that clear to you? Okay, now, this is the, one of the most important characteristic features. Now, for example, I take uh, two springs, Kx, another spring, I have added to this. What has this become? Your original spring of length L. This is how suppose I am doing it. And you know that the, what is the uh, new spring constant? Originally what did you do? KL is equal to KX into X is equal to KY into Y. I hope you got this. Okay? Now, I know one thing. X plus Y is equal to L. What is X? X, X is KL by KX. And what is Y? KL by KY. All this is equal to L. L gets cancelled. K you can take it on to the other side. Now you get a very simplified result that 1 upon Kx plus 1 upon Ky is equal to 1 upon K. I hope uh, this is clear to you. Okay? 1 upon Kx now if I make it into three parts, x, y, z, and if I am adding them together, then how do I get that? 1 upon kx plus 1 upon ky plus 1 upon kz is equal to 1 upon k. Now here I am taking, I know that it is going to be k. Supposing if this is given as k1, this is given as k2, the relation you are going to write now this is called a series arrangement of the spring. A series arrangement of the spring. You may add any number firmly that uh, spring constant becomes obviously less and less and you are going to get like this. So one, two, three, four, any number you add those Whenever you are having that series arrangement, the new spring constant is obtained in this fashion. Okay? Right. Now, on the other hand, 
I take two springs. This is K1, this is K2. When I pull it down, say by X, this is also pulled by X, this is also pulled by Y. So what is the uh, spring force that is uh, acting on this? What is the spring force that is acting on this? K2X plus K1Y. It is pulling. Suppose it is an equilibrium. Now what I am doing is, I want to replace these two springs with a single spring. to have the same impact. Uh, this is also, I'm sorry, x, because both are pulled by x. Now let us say this is pulled by x, both should have the same impact. So I am replacing the two springs with a single spring, then the spring constant is sum of those two, and P stands for parallel arrangement. So you may keep any number of such parallel arrangements. You keep on summing it up, you will get your uh, uh, effective spring constant. In other words, all these springs, if I want to replace with a single spring, what should be the spring constant in order to have that? Same, but I am applying the same force on that. Is this clear to you? This is parallel arrangement. Now I can also show this is a K1, this is K2. Now I am pulling it by X. This gets pulled down by x1, this gets pulled down by x2, okay? Therefore, your x is equal to x1 plus x2 here, okay? Is this a clear to you? Remember, I am applying the same force on this. If because spring is light, same force acts everywhere, like your tension. Tension also, I was all the time telling you, string, light, therefore tension is same everywhere. In a similar way, this also. So, if I take that as F, then how do I write uh, X1? How do I write X1? X1, that is uh, F, is equal to K1 X1 or F by K1. Obviously, same force F by K2. Same force F by Ks. That means I am replacing with the same force I said it is acting. If I have to replace, then what am I getting? Is equal to 1 by K1 plus this is the point I have already discussed before in this case. So, this is series arrangement, the other one is parallel arrangement. Now, wherever you want to get a combination, look. K1, K2, K3, K4. These things, uh, first of all, treat it as a single spring. What do you get? Uh, what is the spring constant there? Uh, 1 by K dash is equal to 1 by K1 plus 1. So you have K2, K1 by K1, K2 or K1, K2 by K1 plus K2 is the spring. Similarly, if I combine these two, by analogy, I can write 
Now I want to combine these two to get a single spring. Then simply add this K1 K2 by K1 plus K2 K3 K4 by K3 plus K4. This is how you get series and parallel combinations, etc. Now there could be many, many such cases that you might be coming across. Everywhere you have to see the same thing. You may come across this in work and energy. You may come across this in uh, uh, simple harmonic motion. This in both the cases, we'll be using these concepts extensively. Okay? For the time being, I just want to give you what is this that we have. And the most of the cases, you come across the spring forces or the spring balancer. This is a case I have already discussed. M1, M2, I told you that this Likewise, is a spring balance. If it is massless, uh, suppose let us say M1, M1, this is T1, this is T2, this is A, this is A, this is A. So how do you get it? Here let us write down, this is T1, M1, G. So how do you arrive? M1, G minus T1 is M1, A. And here, T1 minus T2 is MS, mass of the spring into A, is T2 minus M2G is equal to M2G. It is T1, T2, A. So you add up all. T1 gets cancelled, T2 gets cancelled. M1 minus M2 into G is equal to A into M1 plus M2 plus Ms. Or A is equal to This is the acceleration. A well known thing, simple, you can do it. When I discussed previously, I put Ms equal to 0. If ms is 0, t1 is equal to t2. Now here we will find out what is a t1. First we will find out what is t2. t2 is equal to m2 into g plus a. a is all this. So m1 minus m2, m1 plus m2 plus ms into g. G is also common, M2G by M1 plus M2 plus MS, M1 plus M2 plus M1 minus M2. So, M2 gets cancelled. What are you getting? Uh, G into 2M1 plus MS by I am using sigma M notation for all this to avoid writing every time. In a similar way, what is a T1? Uh, T1 is equal to T2 plus MS. So T1 is equal to what is T2? All this M two G by sigma M two M one plus M S T two plus M S into A. A is M one minus M two into G by sigma M. This is M one minus M two G by sigma M. 
Now Sigmaim and G are common. G by Sigmaim. 2M1 and 2. Two M one M two plus M S M two plus M S M one minus M S M two. So M S M two M S M two gets cancelled, and uh, what do you get? P one is it. Anything common? M1 is common. So M1 G by sigma M into 2 M2 plus Ms. This is T1. T2 is M2 G by sigma M2. 2 M1 plus M2. You know M1 is uh, more than M2. This is what we have seen. Now, if I ask you what is the reading, if you put ms equal to 0, it is 2m1 m2 mg by sigma m. ms there also it becomes 0 and that is nothing but your reading of the spring balance. Well, straightforward, simple, there is no problem. But let us see in this which one is more. I am saying M1 is more because it is accelerating like this. So the first time M1 M2 G is common, here you are getting M1, here you are getting M2. So, T2 is less, T1 is more, T1 is greater than T2. Therefore, what is the reading? T2 by G is the reading of spring balance. T2 by G, what do you get? G gets cancelled. M2, if I take it inside, 2M1 M2 plus M2 MS by sigma M. This is the reading of the spring balance. So, don't come across this in any of the textbooks. And if MS is equal to 0 or it is a light spring, then you will get 2m1 m2 by m1 plus m2. I already told you that is the reading. If that spring balance is massless. If it is having mass, find out t1, t2. Whichever is uh, less because that excess part is responsible for the acceleration. Right? Same thing what we discussed in tension. But in this case, this is going to be the reading of the a spring balance. You understood this point? Right. So, supposing I give you an example like this. The whole system is accelerating up with the A. Okay. What is the reading in the spring balance? You have to look at this is connected to the pulley. Therefore, what is the thrust on the pulley is what you have to take. Why? This uh, thrust is balanced by this. Both are light. Thrust if I take T, if I take T, 
the thrust from the pulley is 2t. Reading is 2t by g. So just like that you take rt m1g and uh, what is the pseudo force? M1A downwards and the relative acceleration. Because the moment you take pseudo force, you will get relative acceleration. Therefore, I am taking it. So, how do you write the equation here? A is already given, mind you, is equal to M1A. In a similar way, I talk of M2, M2G, M2A, T, but here is about, so T minus M2A minus M2G is M2AR. Now, based on these two, because I told you, you eliminate here. The eliminating AR is straightforward. You divide one with the other. AR gets cancelled. So this is M1 into A plus D minus T into M2. The cross multiplication T minus M2 into A plus D. So T, you take everything on to one side. Uh, this side, you bring this on to this side. M1 plus M2 into A plus D. So T is equal to, this is M1, M2. Isn't it? M1, M2. This is also M1, M2, not plus. So you get uh, 2M1, M2. So, Thrust is 2t. Divide with the g. That is the reading. So what is the reading finally for? For m1, m2, Be careful, right? Whatever is be the value, you can substitute and get it. So if the spring balance is given in the horizontal or in the vertical, it makes no difference. You can do that. I hope this is clear to you. Okay. Right. Okay. Now I think it's already time up, we'll do something else.